So all I'm going to do in this video is to show you how to design cylindrical tensile specimen that look like this and the type that also look like this which has a notch in the middle. This is the type of specimen that you typically use when you are investigating the damaged behavior of a metallic material. If you're interested in this, sit back and relax as we get started with this video. So welcome to this channel. My name is Dr. Michael Okreke. I'm a university lecturer within a UK university and I host this channel where I try to help you create effective computational modeling solutions for any problem that you're trying to do. So we're going to look into this video which is the design of cylindrical tensile specimen and the standard type specimen is ASTM E8. If you look in the standard, this is sort of the kind of information you will get. So basically, it's a cylindrical specimen that got dimensions like this. And you could have up to five specimen types. And this really depends on the size of material that you have in order to undertake your tensile testing. So if you've got a lot of materials, then you can easily use the large specimen or standard specimen type. But if you have too much specimen and you have just a limited sample, then you can really go to the very lowest size of specimen so for this video we're going to be using the standard specimen which looks like this and so let's look a little bit more into the details what i want you to note here is for the gauge d being the gauge length d being the diameter a being the length of the reduced parallel section and r being the radius of this fillet so we look a bit more closer for the sample that we want to test so the dimensions are basically like this overall I've chosen a total length of 130 millimeter for this sample and it would have a gauge length of 50 which is the critical region in which you extract let's say the tensile plasticity properties and the fillet would have a 10 millimeter fillet the grip ends here would have a diameter of 20 and the distance between the two parallel ends before it goes into the fillet or this shoulder is 56 millimeter and of course everything is going to be a, a circular cross section so that's the dimension of the specimen that we want to test and at the end i will also look at a notch specimen how do you create a notch specimen so exactly the same except that we're going to introduce a two millimeter u notch right at the center of the specimen so that's the dimension of the specimen let's go into abacus and i'm going to show you how you can go ahead doing this so if you're interested in this kind of content please i do encourage you to subscribe to this channel where i try to make videos to help you create effective computational modeling solution and why i describe them as effective is i try to show students easy ways of doing quite complicated things i mean the essence of this channel is really to show students and show people who view this channel how to accomplish quite complicated things in a very simple and straightforward way and one of the things that is at the core of the mission i have in this channel is to sort of teach you the mechanic you know for, from my background as a university professor i try to teach you the essence you know the theory behind what you're trying to do sort of being very deductive in how you go about trying to make videos and trying to understand what we're doing with this channel so that's sort of really the vision of this and so if you're interested in this kind of content please do subscribe to this channel and also if you have ideas or videos you'd like me to make please do again leave me a comment in the comment section so that i can i do read all the comments and i try to respond to students and try and see if i can make videos to support you so let's quickly go back into abacus as i begin to show you how to actually do this okay so the first thing we need to do is we go to the part module and then we're going to call this a cylindrical specimen so i'll call it a cylindrical specimen i'm going to make it 3d specimen it's deformable and i'm going to use the revolution method to do this so overall the length of this specimen would be um, 130 and it's got an overall height you know of, of 20 in, in terms of the grip end so let's just design half of that so I'll start from here and zero at minus 65 and 0 which is the point somewhere around around here and then I'll go all the way to the other end which will be 65 and let's say 10 so that's half of the specimen. Remember, the specimen is 130 and overall height of 20. So this is just half of the specimen. So we specify that. The other thing I want to do is to specify how wide the gauge section will be. Our gauge section is 12.5. So half of 12.5 will be minus 6.5. So again, I'll start from the zero position and then 6.25 would be. So this is just a construction line to indicate what's going on at this region. All right. So what I'm going to then do is to create the length, the longest region for the parallel regions that we're interested in. So I know that it's 56 overall. So if we then position this, this will be minus 28 and 6.25. So that's this position. And then we'll go on to the other side and that will be 28 
and 6.25. So that's the region that are sort of the largest region in this material. And then after that, we're going to then have a shoulder. All right, so what we're going to do is that we're going to fix that region. So I'm going to click on this. I say, I want you to fix so that it's not going to move. So we'll fix basically that point and that point. So they are anchored and then we can then go ahead and put this center arc around here and on that center arc around there. So it doesn't really matter the dimension. So we're just going to dimension it because we know that it has to be about 10 in diameter. So that's fine in radius. And this is also 10 according to the standard. So we've got all those bits represented properly. Then we just need to trim certain parts. So I'll use this trim option, trim there, trim here, trim here, trim there. So we've got sort of the size of the specimen that we need. So this is the grip ends, the grip ends and the gauge section and the longest parallel region. So now we just need to introduce, because of how we, we need to introduce a construction line in the middle here, so that when we now rotate, so if we click done, so basically it says select the construction line, we select that, and then we want to rotate it by 360 degrees. So that becomes our cylindrical specimen that we're going to work with, and everything looks excellent. So that's how the specimen will look like. So we've got the grip ends, which is quite significant because one day it will be held securely. We've got a nice shoulder that has a diameter, a radius of 10, and then we've got the longest region. Clearly we want a gauge section that is a bit smaller in the center here. So how do we go about doing the gauge section? So we know that it's going to be in the middle here. So we're going to introduce some reference points. So if I press and hold, so I'm going to use this offset point, create an offset. So offset from the center, so we know that the center in this x-axis will be 25 to the left and 25 to the right. So on the x-axis here, I'm going to change this to minus 25. So I'll introduce a reference point there, which is excellent. And then we'll do the same again, click there, and we want to go to the right, which will be 25. So we've got those two points, if you can see them, those two points clearly identified. So what we are going to then do is to introduce um, datum plane or dot point. So we're going to say, okay, datum. So I'm going to use the point and normal. So basically we identify that point and this is the normal direction. That's the datum. We identify this point and this is the normal direction. That's the datum again. So we're happy with that. Then the final thing is to basically create the, so I use a, a datum to partition the system. So this is my datum. I'll create partition, select this other region. And then that's the datum again. And I'll create partition. So what we've done by this is that we've isolated the gauge section, which would be the region where the critical properties of the system will be extracted. So that's fine. Then the last thing we need to do while still on that specimen is to mesh it. So I double click on that. Okay, so we've got, so we select a mesh of, it's recommending three, so we can keep three or maybe I'll do two. So this is fine. However, we need the gauge section to be finely meshed. So we use the, this bit and select that gauge section and click done. So I'll use the number type. So it's currently expecting 25. So if we maybe do up to 40, depends on how fine you want that gauge section to be. Then I can then select everything and I want to, it to be, let's try a sweep. So it's not allowing us to use a sweep. So let's use a tetrahedron anyway, um, default algorithm. And we can then mesh the domain. So now we have a, finely mesh system with the gauge section finely mesh and the regions all nicely done and we can go ahead and use this with our simulation so that's the first part so i'm just going to rename this so now we want to then go and create the notch sample so let's just create a copy so whatever we use so this time we're going to call it notched so and how what do we need to do with the notch so if we come back all the way to the side the cylindrical specimen, all these other things, we can delete it because it wouldn't be necessary. What we then need to do, we open the resolve under the sketch section. So this is sort of where we are. So we want to put a notch here. And that notch will have a, a radius of, it's a U notch with a radius of two millimeters. So I'm just going to introduce a circle right here. And we want that circle to obviously be two millimeters so we can just draw any circle and then dimension that circle we want it to be a radius of two so this is our notch so all we need to do, then do is to trim off the edges of this notch so that it will be open again and we can then revolve around the system so click done again okay since nothing has happened so we go to 
features and ask it to regenerate and right away you generate a notch sample of that ASTM E8 specimen. We don't need to again isolate the gauge section because it's quite clear here so all we need to do is mesh. So I saved the global size of mesh however in this region I'll be interested in finding more seeds. So I'll put here and it's currently that so if I make this maybe 20 so that will be a finely meshed region maybe 20 is too much so if we make it 15 okay so that's a finely meshed region so you could also try and mesh around it using those ones so again it's recommending 20 so maybe if we do 30 so that's a finer mesh region we really need this region to be finely meshed because there will be a lot of stress concentration around that so damage will probably initiate there so we do want to have a fine small mesh size so that damage can nicely propagate through that system so once we've done all that so we want to use a tet to mesh it and then we can go ahead and mesh the domain and everything will come out perfectly so you can see right in the gauge section region is finely mesh so then when damage forms in that region again it will be an excellent flow of damage and everything is fine okay so if you put the two together so this is sort of what you find for the two samples that we've tested and then you can rotate it and see okay so clearly there's a region where you have a nice notch forming on the sample this is what we're interested in the next thing you want to do after this is to undertake the ductile damage simulation of this kind of material and if you want to see a video where i show you how to do that then look at this video thank you for interest in this channel and i'll see you in the next